Matt Lee, Hotbox thought our stuff stoners like wandering into the studios here. Fume Sniffer and Mr. Jeff Patterson just hanging out in this cool ass. Fume Sniffer! I love how chaotic these start out. It just looks like a gnarly blob of glass for the longest time. And then when I cut it at the end, it's just so cool. There's a form in there somewhere. <laughs> right. It's like when you see like a chunk of marble, you know, there could be a statue in it waiting to happen. Of all the potential that it has, all the infinite potential that there is with just making shit out of glass. A little bit of chaos, a little bit of control. Yeah, exactly. It's a little bit of luck. Like a little bit of everything goes a long way, you know. Just like when you're when you're trying to teach people, you don't want to like have them blow too hard into the tube. You don't want to plug in, pull too hard, too fast. A little goes a long way. But then, like like uh, Dustin Revere talks about like the Italians or whatever, like do everything where it's like liquid basically by the time that they're <laughs> working it, you know. And that's really the way that it's the most fun to do it is. And it makes the, the best pieces is when it's almost liquid and you're working it. But at that point, it has the most like integrity kind of built into it. It flowed into that shape. It wasn't forced into that shape. <laughs> when I was a kid, I was telling you, my dad used to live in that little cabin in the woods, you know. There was a, a sliding glass door we had leaned up against the, the back of the house. And it fell over one day in a windstorm and shattered into like a thousand fucking pieces, you know. And then uh, my dad's windshield got broke in the same windstorm, you know, so we had the windshield guy come out and do a repair. And when he was there, he left his little tiny butane torch that he used to heat up the crack in the windshield <laughs> on top of the van. And then he took off. And I asked my dad, you know, can I have that little butane torch? My dad's like, what are you going to do with it? I'm like, what do you do with a butane torch? You melt stuff, you Lights know? Lights it on fire. That's right. Melt. So, uh, I started melting everything that I could find around the house, you know? <laughs> and the next thing you know, I was like yeah. picking up a hunk of this glass that was on the fucking, you know, the back of the house. And I started melting the glass down. And I was like, holy crap, I had no idea that you could like melt glass like this, you know? <laughs> there wasn't a, a solid bottle left to be found at the Pedersen residence. <laughs> but, uh, so my uncle is a stained glass artist, actually. And, and he does like fused glass and stuff. Oh, nice. And so when I told him that I started melting this glass with this torch, he was like, oh, well, I have this little hothead torch, you know, <laughs> made for doing soft glass, you know, melt and stuff like that. I was like, oh, wow, that's really cool. And so then after that, he gave me that hothead torch, and I started playing with little chunks of soft glass. He would cut me strips off of his little window pieces and whatnot. And I could just melt those down into rods and use that however I wanted to. And then at some point from there, it just became like a, an obsession. I realized that this is what I'm gonna do for my life, you know? <laughs> and I started buying the equipment from there, buying regulators. I bought that little national right there with my first torch, this guy here. And then uh, I'll show you, here, actually I can probably pull it out from here. Whoa. It was this. This is a brazing torch for Rush the burner. And shit, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's what yeah. they use to like solder gates together and whatnot, you know, and they make big brass gates and shit. And I was making fucking pipes and bongs on that, you know. Awesome. And then uh, a guy seen the fact that I was using that and told me, oh, I have this Carlisle here, you know. I'll sell you this Carlisle for 400 bucks. Wow. I was like, fuck, you gotta kid me, I'll take it, you know. Yeah. I was like, this is a life changer. And then from there, it just like, it, it fucking kept growing and growing and growing. And upgrades and upgrades. That's right, you know, and just, that was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. That's cool, man. You know, it's been a few years of just like, you know, I do side jobs wherever I can. I still, you know, if I can pick up some work somewhere else, I'll do that too, you know, sure. just because. But doing the glass, it, it finally became a full-time thing when, uh, when I moved up here and, and set the studio up with Brian here. It was one of those uh, like factors of you gotta make it happen 
to, to make it happen. You, yep. you gotta fucking be here every day making glass. Just like a job. You know, exactly. When you work for yourself, you have to work harder. <laughs> yeah. Seven days a week. Yeah, and nobody's telling you to do anything, you know. You gotta tell yourself to do everything. And it's so much harder to fucking get motivated when I'm like, oh, well, I could always do it later, you know? Do it tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow never comes. Exactly. So. Sure. And so it became like a, a chore after a while, and so I got kind of bored with it, you know? <laughs> and that's when I started figuring out really that, like, my bread and butter thing, you know, making those reclaimers. Like, I got just boxes of parts, you know, pre-set up to make the reclaimers with. Nice. So that when I got my time ready, you know, I'll come out and I'll just sit here and assemble everything. Yeah. So that all the reclaimers are done and ready to go. And I don't have to worry about it. Those pay for the ability to do the crazy artistic stuff that I want to do. And then, you know, awesome people like you that fucking see the crazy cool, like, spinner one-off rig that I make. And it's like, fucking, oh, gotta have it. Gotta well, have fucking, it. That makes my life so much better. Because, like, I don't like to make the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And so it's really cool to like see that what I think is cool, what I want to make one of, other people think is cool as yeah. well and want it. These little guys right here, you can get yours full of stickers or with just one. I'm using mine with the uh, J Red Knot. And so after every dab, rather than, you know, just torching it out, you heat it up a little bit and pull back through the rig and it'll bring any extra reclaim down into this section here. Very cool design. For a little while, I worked at a lapidary uh, business down in Oregon where I made cabochons and, and uh, you know, faceted hunks of fluoride into wands and things like that. And doing that, I realized that like, I can do the same kind of techniques to my glass work and not not change anything, basically. The same wand shape. When you make a fluoride wand, you cut a piece of fluoride into a crystal shape, you know? This was a piece of glass, just like this blob is here. All I'm gonna do is stretch it out, make it round and then roughly crystal shape, and then facet it with the machine. Same thing with the, you know, natural chunks of fluoride. When you buy those wands and whatnot, they didn't come out of the ground in a crystal shape like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're cut that way. And so I realized, oh yeah, I can do that with glass too. I can do that with anything. And and then I tried for a while to try and like make the most, uh, you know, like natural looking thing I could. But doing that, I was trying too hard. And it wasn't until like, like this one here, you can see, oh, it, it is, it's just a bunch of random swirls. But what is nature other than a bunch of random mm -hmm. swirls, you know? You try too hard and you meticulously place things, and it looks like you tried too hard and meticulously <laughs> place things. There's some Fibonacci sequencing happening in there. <laughs> exactly, you know? Nature oh, just cool. is. It's so beautiful on its own. Trying to, like, recreate it, all you gotta do is let gravity do its thing. Gravity will generally shape your shit into something attractive. <laughs> Glass is like a liquid, you know? And so, like, sea creatures, they're all kind of liquid shaped already, like an eel and a fish. It's just like a hot blob of glass stretched out. So it happens naturally really easily, you yeah. know? So in uh, crystals, it's kind of the interior part is really kind of washed around and then it's only the outside where the growth lines are that are anything very meticulously made, the cuts and facets that make up the, you know, like, six sides to match to six sides because generally the point will have six sides on it too you can go lazy and do like these ones here where i got four points on the top right. and it looks like a crystal and it'll work really good for the spinner but it doesn't like it doesn't mimic nature in the right, same way right. that's the only thing you got to be kind of like careful about and air bubbles you know there's rarely ever like water inclusions in crystals or air bubbles right and so you try and minimize the amount of those that occur and that's all about having high quality starting materials or the right colors, I guess, because certain yeah, colors are bubbly by uh, just generally. Yeah, generally, you know, you don't want to really start, like, I mean, even this pink slime has some little bubbles in it and whatnot, but in the end, it's going to look so good that the little tiny bubbles aren't going to matter. It's right. not, I'm not trying to recreate rose quartz with pink slime. I'm right. trying to make a nice pink slimy, purpley crystal and whatnot. <laughs> that's cool, man. Here's the purple lilac? Purple lilac and pink slime. Really nice. That is cool. 